This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. This is Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures on Facebook dot com slash winning cures everything or just go to winning cures everything dot com it's got everything you need to know for the podcast the youtube etc give you the rundown for today's show it's monday february the 11th today clemson may have unknowingly provided peds to the suspended players from the college football playoff the aaf recap of week one turned out pretty good i think And then we're going to talk about the NCAA selection reveal from this past Saturday of the top four seeds for all four regions. Uh, As always, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can go find more information on those over at tunicatravel.com. As always, I'm going to give you some college basketball picks at the end of this. I've only got four for today. It's a light Monday slate. Uh, You may not even need to bet four, but I've got four that I kind of like the numbers on. I'm going to give them to you afterwards. Let's go on and jump into into the first topic. Clemson may have unknowingly provided PEDs, performance-enhancing drugs, to suspended players. It is surprising to me how little traction this story has gotten. This should be a massive story. Dabo Sweeney told the Post and Courier, which is based in Charleston, South Carolina, that the players that were suspended for the college football playoff may have ingested the supplement Osterine from a team-issued supplement that had been cleared by the NCAA. Now, the, the part of this that I'm trying to figure out, the NCAA's dietary supplement section of their website warns universities about this. It says there is no assurance of a product's purity safety, or effectiveness, and that supplements may contain banned substances regardless if they're listed in the ingredients or not because of contamination or poor manufacturing priorities. Um, I'm baffled at this. If you're taking something that is questionable and the school is giving it to you, if you're the player, do you have the right to... uh, to sue the university for not making sure that they are providing a substance to you that is not going to... And I get this. This may have been completely innocent. But Clemson, why why are you providing supplements anyway? And, and I understand it may be something that the NCAA would have cleared, but if it's from a shady manufacturer and it could end up with something like this, why are you providing this? It, if I'm the player, I'm looking at this from a whole different side. The appeal process, because of what I just read you from the NCAA's dietary supplement section, it, the NCAA is not going to overturn this appeal. Clemson knew what they were doing, or at least they should have. You can't plead ignorance in this spot. It, this should be a massive story. The things that Clemson gave to these players may have resulted in them losing a year of eligibility. That is insane to me. Why is nobody talking about this? Dabo and that bunch, for all the good that they have done with developing talent, developing players and whatnot, this is a huge oversight. They should have been on top of this. And if you are a big-time, big-money university like that, and football is your power, I mean, you got two national championships in the last three years. You should know better. Why are you providing things like this? And they're not the only ones that do it, obviously. But, I mean, this is this is a big deal. Now, it didn't cost them a national championship, obviously. But they didn't test every player either. It, it makes you wonder what exactly it was that they were taking. Is everybody on the team taking it? Where did the stuff come from? This, it, there's going to be a lot more come out of this. There will be investigations into what it was that the players actually took that might have been contaminated with Osterine. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I want to see what happened, right? Uh, let's jump into the AAF recap. Week one was nice. I think it was a success. Uh, the TV ratings did better than the NBA on Saturday night. Obviously, people love football. There's a lot of curiosity. I don't know that it'll 
draw what it did. It drew 2.9 million the first night, which beat out the uh, the Thunder and the uh, what else? Uh, the Thunder and the Rockets, which is a, a pretty big basketball game. Obviously, NBA regular season means nothing, not a big deal, but. You know, opening night of a brand new football league that's basically a minor league system for the NFL. Uh, I think that's pretty good. If you got television sets turned on to this, this could have a lasting. Uh, the, the league could last for a while, right? Uh, I did like the transparency of the video reviews. That was a breath of fresh air. The game length was nice. It the game never turned off of. Uh, the game, it, it, the commercials were on a side screen. It was it was nice. It was different. The game lasted about two and a half hours. I, I watched all of two of the games and part of a third one. Two and a half hours. You got it on basically in the background. It's nice. And it was nice to see guys like Steve Spurrier back out there. I enjoyed it. Um, let's jump through what actually happened. The Orlando Apollos, Steve Spurrier, uh, he still got it. Uh, the, Atlanta, the the Apollos won forty to six over the Atlanta Legends. Uh, Spurrier's offense is absolutely loaded in Orlando. They are going to he he has no problem with uh, running a whole lot of different plays, right? A whole lot of different stuff. I am pumped about that. Uh, the San Antonio Commanders Saturday night fifteen to six over the San Diego Fleet. Um, the, the defensive line for San Antonio is awesome, to say the least. Uh, their entire defense looks fast. If you can hold a Mike Martz offense to six points, that's a, that's a pretty good job. Pretty good job. Uh, Birmingham Iron, 26. The Memphis Express, nothing. Trent Richardson, fumble aside. Second half, when, when they started running the football, like just downhill. 56 yards, two touchdowns. He looked good. Christian Hackenberg is awful. Uh, his decision making is the biggest problem, right? He's just he's just not a very good quarterback, and and he's got so much hype and so many tools, and he just can't seem to turn it into anything. Not a big fan of that. Uh, of course, at the same time, the Memphis Express do not have a lot of deep threats. Uh, their wide receiver core is mostly unknown, and. I mean, that might have had something to do with it, but I think Hackenberg, a good quarterback, turns decent wide receivers into great wide receivers. That just happens. So while Hackenberg doesn't have a whole lot of help from that position, at the same time, he's not helping them either. Uh, And the last game was Sunday night. The Arizona Hot Shots 38, the Salt Lake City Stallions 22. Rick Neuheisel, uh, along with uh, uh, John Wolford. Wolford, 18 out of 29, 275 yards, four touchdowns. Zero picks. Their offense is a lot of fun to watch. They have got a ton of talent on that team. Uh, I'm going to be interested to watch the Hot Shots and the Apollos at some point. I mean, that, that seems like the two best teams. Uh, I do want to see the, the San Antonio Commanders. Their defense, again, looks legit. If they can slow down the Apollos or the Hot Shots, okay, then we might have something. Uh, but I think overall the league looks like it could be a success it's fun to, to watch a different brand of football, to watch something different, um, and not have to just stick to basketball, right? Like You only got four games a week. You got two on Saturday, two on Sunday. I'm excited about it. I like it. Let's move on from there. The NCAA selection reveal. Now, this was on Saturday morning. They gave the top four seeds for all four regions. We're going to run through those really quick. The East was number one, Duke. Two seed Michigan, three seed Marquette, four seed Iowa State. The South region was one seed Tennessee, two seed North Carolina, three seed Purdue, four seed Nevada. The Midwest, number one Virginia, number two Kentucky, number three Houston, number four Wisconsin. And in the West, number one Gonzaga, number two Michigan State, number three Kansas, who is awful on the road, and then number four Louisville. I bring this up because they they make this a huge television deal, and it's kind of like the college football playoff ranking thing every week. Would it not be much more riveting television if they gave you, like, the last 12 teams that were in and the first four out? 
Like, I think more people are interested in the bubble teams than the teams that – because these that they gave us, these top 16, you already knew they were in. So why are we even doing this? I just – I think it would be better if you go on if, – if you want to give the top 16, that's fine. You can discuss how you seated them and why you seated them where you did and da 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 And then give us the bottom 12 teams that are in and then the first four that are out. And we're talking at-large selections, right? So per bracket matrix, I'm going to go on and give you these. These are the last 12 that got in and then the first four teams that were left out. And this is the at-large consideration. So I'll do this every week, and then we'll just see what happens. So let's do this. Uh, the last four at-larges, the very last team in per bracketmatrix.com, which, by the way, they take all of the different bracket projections across the internet, average them all out, put them all together. I like it. They give you exactly what everybody's thinking all in one spot. So uh, the last team in, Temple. They're 12 seed. Another 12 seed, Seton Hall. They're next to last. Uh, UCF, a number 11 seed. Arizona State, an 11 seed. Number 11, Indiana. 11 seed, Clemson. Uh, then we've got 10 seed, Alabama. 10 seed, NC State. 10 seed, Minnesota. 10 seed, St. John's. 9 seed, Oklahoma. 9 seed, Ole Miss. Here are your first four teams out. Davidson, Butler, Utah State, and Nebraska. Nebraska has been ravaged with injuries. They and they're in an insanely tough conference. So the good thing for them is they got a shot to get some big wins, right? Utah State, not so much. I mean, they are in the same uh, same league with Nevada, so they got a shot there. Davidson, the A10. I mean, you you got a chance to get some big wins, and you can win the uh, the A10 tournament. So uh, Butler again, Big East. Got a shot at some wins. They got Villanova. They got uh, uh, Xavier. They got Marquette. They got Xavier's not great right now, but either way. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll do the last uh, twelve at larges and the first four out per bracketmatrix.com every Monday, and then we'll just see where we are. But it, this was much more entertaining to me than talking about the teams that we already know are going to be in. Right? Makes sense. Okay. Uh, Let's go into the college basketball picks. Let's jump into that uh, first game. I got got two totals and three sides. Sorry, two totals, two sides. So, first one up, and I'm going to give the rotation numbers. I've had people requesting rotation numbers. Uh, 861, I'm going over 139 in Portland State against Sacramento State. Uh, I'm trying a different formula. It seemed to work a little bit on Sunday. Sunday, I went 4-2-1. Uh, Saturday was awful. I went three and six. Friday was awful again. I went one and three. Got back on the right side yesterday, four, two, and one, and had Missouri State not hit that buzzer beater, I would have had the under in that game. Instead, I pushed at 131 on that game. So, uh, But over 139 on Portland State and Sacramento State, that's rotation number 861. Rotation number 307662, I'm taking North Carolina A&T minus 13. Rotation number 307653, I'm going over 160 in Lehigh versus Bucknell. Both of those teams have had three straight overs. They are both scoring well in the 80s. I like that right now. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Both teams are playing really well right now. Uh, And then finally, rotation number 307666, Savannah State plus one. They have won three straight ball games. Uh, Morgan State has lost three straight. And somehow Morgan State is favored. Uh, If you go and actually look at the numbers, Savannah State should be favored by about a point here. And so I'm going to roll with the home team. Savannah State plays much better at home than they do on the road. Morgan State only 1-11 on the road. I'm in with that. As always, you can find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. You go up in the navigation bar, you hit gambling picks. It's right there. So go check that out. It's also, if you're on YouTube, in the description. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe on the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever it is. Search for Winning Cures Everything. It will be there. Uh, Share the show out with your buddies. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. We love you guys. We will see you all again tomorrow. 
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.